Yesterday, upon the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish, I wish he'd go away. G'day and welcome to the Paul Wallace channel. Now, have you ever seen a figure in your home of someone who wasn't there or shouldn't have been there? Someone who is person-sized but is absolutely black. You cannot see any physical features. It's just like a shadow of a person and yet super clear. You can point to exactly where that person is. If you've experienced that, that is called a shadow person. And I'm going to be talking about that today, not from the point of view of trying to prove that it's a real phenomenon, simply to share the kind of experiences that people are having and then have a think about what these phenomena might actually mean. Now, I'll be completely honest. I didn't take this topic at all seriously until it started happening to my young son. And like most parents, when he reported that when he was walking through the house at night, he could see shadow people, straight away I thought, okay, son, I think you were dreaming, or I think you were in that liminal place in between being awake and asleep, and you're seeing things that are not there. However, because of my research, I knew not to dismiss what my son was telling me and to ask more questions. And as my son spoke to me about these experiences, I started noticing some features of what he was telling me. First of all, he was not always asleep or half asleep when he saw these figures. And then he was very specific about where he saw them. There's one that sits on the couch over there with his feet on the cushions and his behind on the top of the couch. There's one that always stands there and there's a slightly shorter one that stands over there. Well, I tried walking through that room in different shades of darkness to see if there was anything he might be seeing in a half awake state that he could interpret that way and I couldn't see anything. And then one time he said, one of those things was in the corridor today when I came down to your room. So now it was somewhere else, somewhere he'd never seen it before. And then one time he said, one of those things was in my room last night and I was absolutely terrified. And instead of saying, son, I think you were dreaming, it was probably a nightmare, I reassured him and said, well, nothing happened, it didn't hurt you or anything. No, and he was somewhat reassured. And then I said, can you draw for me exactly what you saw? And so he drew a shadow figure, human shaped, but wearing the traditional headdress of a shaman. And when he drew that very precise image, I thought, oh my goodness, that is very specific. And where does my young son know that image from? It's the archetypal shamanic image, Jamiroquai style. And I know I've just shown my age by using that reference, but to give you an idea of what he drew. Well, these experiences continued through the years in different rooms, in different houses, at different ages. And the pattern was the same, that he would see these figures, they would be looking at him, but there was never any interaction, there was never anything that happened that really gave him cause to be afraid. Now, initially, I was willing to write this off as just one of those things that we experience as children, that our brains are trying to interpret the world around us as we're growing up, and it will fill in some gaps and make some mistakes from time to time. Except that my research path began intersecting with what my son was telling me. Now, my studies are in the field of ancestral narratives and how they speak to our place in the cosmos, our origins as a species. And as I've studied indigenous story, an ancient biblical story and narratives from cultures all around the world, I've come to the conclusion that you and I live in a world of far more company than we generally acknowledge. And it's not difficult for me to believe that there may be entities around us that we don't perceive with our five physical senses. Now, anyone who's shared their home 
with a cat or a dog will be familiar with this. And you'll hear people say, my dog, round about the same time every evening, will react as if a person has just walked through the room. And it will follow them to the window, growl a bit at them, and then follow them as they walk out the room again. Cats and dogs seem to perceive movement that we don't perceive. Sometimes they react as if it's a threat, and sometimes it's more a puzzled, what are you doing here, kind of look. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find a dog owner or cat owner who hasn't concluded that a cat's eyes and a dog's eyes and the frequency of their brain waves enables them to perceive entities that you and I don't perceive. And as long as they don't interact with us or scare us or do us any harm, we're happy to live with that belief. It doesn't bother us. And shadow people is that kind of a phenomenon for many people. Through my work in coaching, I've learned it's not just children who have this experience. It's adults too. And it's not just experiences at nighttime or after dreaming or in that liminal space between being awake and asleep. People see these entities in broad daylight. And from time to time, they might even attempt to capture them on camera. A friend of mine who is an Aboriginal Australian, when he goes walkabout, says he can often see shadow people observing him from the forest. And he has sent me images of what he has seen while out on walkabout. He's not afraid of them. He's not quite sure how to interpret them. He's not sure what they are. Simply that they observe him. As I've studied the texts of the Bible, the ancient Sumerian, Babylonian, Arcadian, and Assyrian texts, the stories of the Maya from out of Guatemala, written up in the Popol Vuh, as I've listened to Norse legend, Greek mythology, African narratives, I have come to the belief that we are all observed by other species, that we are all under observation, that we have cosmic neighbors very interested in Homo sapiens and they are observing us much in the same way that we observe ducks and we take them out of the wild, we put a little tag on them so we can follow them around, see what they do, where they go, what they eat, because we want to understand ducks. I do believe that there are cosmic neighbors studying us in exactly the same kind of way. And I've come to wonder if some of these encounters with shadow people might be an encounter with observers of that kind. Because 95% of the accounts of shadow people that I have heard in the counseling room have been that kind of experience. They are there, they're watching me. They never do anything, they make me feel very uncomfortable, I find them super scary, but they've never really interacted they've just observed. And that seems to be part of a bigger pattern that I am finding in our ancestral story and ancestral experience. If our ancestors experienced it, then why shouldn't we? But how do we interpret it? What are these shadow entities? One theory I'm considering is that what we perceive might not be a physical presence. It might be the projection into our perceptual field of an entity in a parallel dimension or who operates on a frequency that is visible to the eye of a dog or the eye of a cat but not visible to our eye. I mean we only see this portion of the spectrum of radio waves. Uh, a cat sees another spectrum, a dog sees another spectrum. Could it be something like that? And one of the reasons I think it might be a shadow or a projection of a being in another dimension is because of something very surprising that I have heard in the coaching space. Now I've coached many people who've had shadow people encounters and by total coincidence, people around the world have told me the same hack that they have discovered for disrupting these appearances and it is the playing of a shortwave radio in their room. Now my dad 
used to listen to shortwave radio all the time because that was the only way he could listen to the BBC World Service. And I've heard of people who will have the radio on, on shortwave, and turn the volume right down so they can't hear anything. But as long as they're doing that, these apparitions are discontinued. I find that fascinating and it just makes me wonder if there's something to this idea of shadow people being a projection that can be disrupted through disrupting the sound radio or energetic environment of the room. Yet there are aspects to this experience that suggest it is something other than an energetic phenomenon or a projection phenomenon, that these beings might be something other than mere shadows. One of my clients experienced visitations from shadow people for 10 years while he was living in the UK. He then emigrated to another country and for the whole decade he was living overseas. No more visits from these disturbing shadow people in his home. When he returned to the UK, he moved to a completely different part of the country to where he lived before. But as soon as he was back in the UK, the visitations of the shadow people started up again. And it was only by using that shortwave radio hack he was able to put a stop to it. Now I find that fascinating. Again, it suggests observation, and it may be observation of a location rather than a tagging of particular individuals. Now I said just now, it might not be a pure projection or energetic phenomenon. These could be physical entities that are appearing to people in a cloaked form. Now again, just to clarify, we're talking about a person-sized person, but they are cloaked and they often look like they're wearing a black cloak and a hood, but you cannot see their face. There's no visible features. It's just solid black. But I know two people who have had physical interactions with these entities. Mike Ricksecker is the author of A Walk in the Shadows, a complete guide to shadow people. And he tells the experience of being at home as a child and being visited by one of these shadow people. He perceived it in his room and then the shadow person was shocked that he had been noticed and then came closer to Mike, took a hold of his arms and crossed them over his chest and then ran out the room and hid in a cupboard because he didn't want to be perceived by the other people in the house. Now that's an extraordinary experience for a number of reasons. Firstly, there was a physical interaction and it was only later in a regression experience that Mike came to believe that the being had done that to try and comfort Mike because he could see Mike was scared. He could see the shadow person was agitated because he didn't want to be seen. And then he was so worried about being seen by the adults in the house that he hid in a cupboard, which again suggests a physical presence. Now, that might sound ridiculous, and as a one-off, you might say there's an imaginative child or there's a child having a dream. But when you hear more and more of these experiences by children and adults, and you notice the patterns, you begin listening a little differently. I have a friend whose name, we'll call him Jim. When he was a young boy, he was very ill. His body was unable to absorb nutrients from his food and came to the point where his health was really failing. He was placed in hospital in a special care unit. His health was so fragile that his mother was allowed to sleep in the adjacent room in the hospital. And then one night, his mother saw a black cloaked figure walk into the room with the babies and toddlers in it. She thought she was seeing a nun in a black habit and the figure walked up to Jim's crib, bent down and lifted him up and just held him for a few moments and lowered him back down. When Jim's mum asked the staff, they made very clear there are no nuns in black habits who work in this hospital. What was it she saw and why was she not more disturbed by what had happened? The main reason she wasn't terrified is because of what happened next. 
because from the very next day, Jin's health began to lift. His body started absorbing nutrients, and by the time I knew him, he was a very fit and healthy 25-year-old young man, completely healed from what had happened to him. So there is an interaction with a before and an after, a physical interaction where the child was lifted up and lowered back down. It's possible that the shadow people phenomenon straddles more than one phenomenon. It could be a projection. It could be an energy-based being. It could be a being in a dimension out of phase with our own, but occasionally it's in phase sufficiently that we become aware of each other. Could be a physical entity cloaked. But at this point, no one who has wanted to talk to me in coaching about shadow people has reported anything scarier than having one of these beings in front of them, looking at them or observing them. I haven't had any disturbing stories or stories of harm committed by shadow people. Now your experience might be different and I'd be very interested to get into conversation with you in the comments as to what you've experienced of these things. Did you experience them as a child? Have you experienced them as an adult? At night? In daytime? In broad daylight? What has your experience been and how do you interpret it? Mike Ricksecker has reflected on his own experiences and suggests that it's possible that what we perceive is not the prime reality. That if a person were to project their consciousness to another place, to imaginatively be with someone that they love, or to try and remote view someone that they love, how would that be perceived by the other person? Would it be like a little orb in their room? Would it be a shadow person observing them that they would see? And I think that's a very interesting question, suggesting that what we experience is simply our end of an equation. And what that experience is from the other end of the equation could be something quite different. It could be an astral projection. It could be remote viewing. Or it could be a visitation from a person very much like us, but who's cloaked because they don't want to frighten us. Unfortunately, they're not always successful on that score. So those are my thoughts on shadow people to this point. I wonder if some recent sightings in public places might be that kind of an experience rather than actual close encounters with physical beings. But tell me what you think. This is really a conversation starter and I'd love to meet you in the comments, hear your experience, and perhaps I'll learn something from the things you've experienced and reflected on. And maybe we'll come back to this topic another time. Meanwhile, I want to give a quick plug for my upcoming book, if you'll let me, The Invasion of Eden, coming out on the 9th of April. Ask the question, did our ancestors warn us about ET invasions? And is history repeating itself in the 21st century? It reflects on ancestral narratives and reflects on how they speak to everything that's happened in the last 12 months in the stoush between the Pentagon and the US Congress surrounding the program and the secrecy veiling all that. Meanwhile, if you want to talk to me about shadow people, come to the comments and we'll get into conversation. Thanks for joining me today on the Paul Wallace channel. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.